Carpal Tunnel Syndrome Treatment The clinical picture of Carpal Tunnel Syndrome Usually, the patient will complain of pain, numbness, and parathesia in the palmar aspect of the thumb, index, and long finger. It is at the median nerve distribution. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome occur more at night. These symptoms wake the patient up from sleep, causing the patient to shake the hand in an attempt to resolve these symptoms. Positive canal sign. Percussion of the volar wrist crease produces electric sensation distally to the fingers. Fallen test is usually positive. How Fallen test is done? It is done by flexing the wrist for 60 seconds. This will increase the carpal tunnel pressure temporarily and produce the symptoms. If the test is positive, the patient will have numbness and tingling in the hand and wrist. Positive compression test, darkens test. This is the most sensitive test. The examiner places even pressure with two thumbs directly over the patient's median nerve in the carpal tunnel for about 30 seconds. Reproduction of symptoms in the distribution of the median nerve means that the test is positive for carpal tunnel syndrome. A self-administered hand diagram is extremely helpful. It is the most specific test for carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient should highlight the areas where they are experiencing the symptoms. Patient may complain of thinner atrophy, weakness, or clumsiness of the hand. The patient history and examination is an indication for carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a clinical diagnosis. What is the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome? The treatment is usually anti-inflammatory medication, activity modification, avoid activities that aggravate the symptoms. Then use neutral wrist splints. It will help the nighttime symptoms because it lowers the carpal tunnel pressure. Functional wrist splints, which is about 30 degree extension, aggravates the carpal tunnel syndrome because it increases the carpal tunnel pressure. At three months, 50% of the patients will improve with splints. At 18 months, more patients will improve with splints. Sometimes I use vitamin B6. There is really no proof that vitamin B6 and physiotherapy has any significant effect on improvement of carpal tunnel symptoms. A steroid injection is used for the treatment and for the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome if clinical examination or electrodiagnostic test is not clear. If the patient temporarily improves from injection, then the patient will definitely improve from surgery. How do you inject carpal tunnel? Mark the intersection of the palmaris longus tendon and the distal palmar crease. Next, go one centimeter proximal and one centimeter ulnar to that site. This will be the point of injection. Use 25 gauge needle with the desired steroid and 1 ml lidocaine. Put the needle at 45 degree angle to the skin of the wrist, direct the needle towards the base of the thumb, and advance the needle distally and slowly. The physician should warn the patient before the injection that if any feeling of numbness, parathesia, or severe pain exists, to let the physician know about it. The injection gives 80% transient improvement and 22% of the patients will be symptom-free at one year after the injection. Surgery, it's called carpal tunnel release. 
It can be open or endoscopic. The operation is usually done when there is persistence of the symptoms and failure of the non-operative treatment. The injection is a good prognosis for improvement after surgery. When the splint no longer works and when steroid injection only gives temporary improvement, injection is a good prognosis for improvement from surgery. The nerve is much like a truck passing through a tunnel. The nerve should be able to pass through the tunnel with ease and without friction. So if the tunnel is narrow, then the nerve cannot pass. And if you want the nerve to pass, then widen the tunnel. And we widen the tunnel by cutting the transverse carpal ligament as you see here in this example. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons recommends doing electrodiagnostic studies before performing carpal tunnel release surgery. Graham stated that if the patient has a strong history and clinical examination for the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, then the electrodiagnostic test is unlikely to change the clinical diagnosis. And I believe that. How do you do the surgery? And what is the outcome of the surgery? The endoscopic procedure will give a better early rehab. The result is the same as with an open release. However, incomplete release is a complication of the endoscopic procedure. The pinch strength returned to normal by 6 weeks. The grip strength returned to normal by 12 weeks. At 1 year, 20% 20 of the patient with severe carpal tunnel symptoms will continue to have symptoms. Revision carpal tunnel usually occurs when there is incomplete release. 25% will have no relief and only 25% will have complete relief. The recurrent motor branch of the median nerve can be injured during the surgery. I want to talk about the anatomy and the variation in the distribution of that nerve. After passing through the carpal tunnel, the median nerve gives a branch on the radial side called the recurrent motor branch. This branch is an important nerve supply to the thinner muscles. The recurrent motor branch of the median nerve has multiple variation. 50% are extra ligamentous. 30% are subligamentous and 20% are transligamentous. This transligamentous nerve can be injured. If the nerve is injured, the patient will get progressive thinner atrophy due to that injury. It is important to cut the transverse carpal ligament far annually to avoid cutting the recurrent motor branch of the median nerve. So if you see a patient after carpal tunnel release and that patient has progressive thinner atrophy, that can be explained by the fact there is an injury to an unrecognized transligamentous motor branch of the median nerve. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.